What's up Fight Fans, thank you as always for passing by the channel, much appreciated, hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. Alright, so um, remember I did a video about Terence Crawford potentially fighting Louis Collazo and I said, you know what, not a good fight for Terence Crawford, we need to see him in against someone that we kind of know, someone that is recognised as a top 10, top 5 welterweight and someone that raised his profile a bit as well, right? So someone that ticks all those boxes. Um, most recently, I think a couple of days ago, it got announced that there is talks ongoing between Terence Crawford and Amir Khan for a potential March-April showdown, um, which, look, I think is a, a big up on Louis Collazo. I think Khan um, brings all those things that I just mentioned. I still think he is in and around the top 10. I think it's fair to say um, he is known to the boxing public. He's had some great fights in America. So, look, I think on one hand, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here, I think on one hand it's a good matchup for Amir Khan and for Terence Crawford. More for Amir Khan than Terence Crawford, because I still think Terence Crawford could aim slightly higher, no disrespect. But I think for Amir Khan, it ticks all your boxes, right? Um, it puts you back on the American market. It's clear that he likes to fight in America more than he does in the UK. I mean, if you look at Khan for the last, I don't know, 10 years, he's probably had, what, four, five fights in the UK? The rest have been in America and they've been big shows, right? Canelo was a big show. Danny Garcia was a big show. Even the fights against Louis Calazzo, Devin Alexander, Zab Judah, Paulie Malinaji. He's had some big fights in the US. So he likes fighting there. He wants to go back there. It raises his profile. It does a lot for him in terms of his worldwide profile as well. Khan does so much outside of the ring. So I think fighting in the US makes sense. Plus, you get a chance to fight for the WBO World Welterweight title. You get a chance to fight the number two pound for pound in the world. And um, it'll probably be on pay-per-view. In fact, I'm sure it'll be on pay-per-view. So for Khan, look, there's absolutely no problem him taking this fight, right? I think it's a fight that he thinks he matches up well against Terence Crawford. I don't agree. I think it's a good matchup. But I think Terence Crawford does beat Khan quite convincingly, if I'm honest with you. So for Khan, it's tick-tick, right? For Khan, it's tick-tick. For Brook, it's a fucking nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. And what it does for us fans that wanted to see the, the Khan versus Brook showdown in 2019 or whenever, I think it completely shuts the door on that fight. And as a Brook fan, as a Khan fan, as a guy that likes big British dust-ups, that pisses me the fuck off. I can't lie to you. It pisses me off. Um, I wanted to see Khan Brook for about 10 years, I'm, I'm honest with you. Even when Khan was world elite at uh, 140, coming up to 147, and Brook maybe hadn't kind of made that breakthrough, I still thought it was a fantastic matchup. And then it started to grow, right? Khan started to do really good things at 147. Brook won a world title, and I thought, you know what, we're here. And then it kind of dived. Khan got knocked out by Canelo. Brook lost those bouts against GGD and Spence, and it died, it dead. It was like, well, no interest. For some reason, I don't know if it's because Khan signed to match him. For some reason, interest grew again, right? And it kind of went there. I don't think it was the peak it was four years ago, but interest grew again and it kind of went up there. And I was like, you know what? This is the perfect time to have this matchup. Um, Brooke did go to 154. Khan said, you know what? You've got to come back to 147. Um, he is now back to 147. And it was like, you know what? This is the time. And now all of a sudden, Crawford's come into the mix and it almost looks like Khan versus Brook is dead again. Look, I'm a fan of both, but I'm more of a Brook fan. I've done videos dissing both. You guys can watch the history, go on the channel, you'll look at it. I've dissed Khan, I've equally dissed Brook. But I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I'm more of a Brook fan. And as a Brook fan, I'm fucking pissed off. I can't lie to you. I am fucking pissed off. I mean, what more does Brook have to do to get this fight? He has been begging, begging for this fight for the last seven years, right? Let, let's be straight. He's been begging for this fight for the last seven years and the ball has always been in the court of Amir Khan. If Amir Khan wants to fight Brook, he makes the fight happen tomorrow. It's almost similar to Mayweather Khan when that happened. If Mayweather wanted to fight Khan, he signs the contract, they fight whenever he wants. Khan, for some reason, has all that power. Brook doesn't, right? Brook doesn't really have that power. I thought he might have a bit more power with Eddie Hearn considering Eddie Hearn's probably... I don't know, probably now the most powerful promoter in the world, but it doesn't seem like he's got any more power, to be honest. It almost looks like Khan completely calls the shots here. And whatever he does, Brook has to dance to. And even when he danced to it, fights are still not happening. And it annoys me. But what Khan's doing is pretty smart, people. And I'm not going to blame him. If I was in Khan's situation, I'd probably do exactly the same thing, right? You've got Crawford and you've got Brook. I mean, Crawford's a win-win. 
Khan's not expected to beat Crawford. Crawford's number two pound for pound in the world. Khan's not expected to there, so Khan can almost go in there with a free swing. If he beats Crawford, fuck me. He's, he goes from there to there. If he loses, someone's going to be like, well, you know, I wasn't the favourite going in. Very similar to Canelo fight. If he got smashed by Canelo, not a problem. It's Canelo. If he wins, fuck me. If Khan loses to Brook, it's done. And very similar for Brook as well. If Brook loses to Khan, done. And that's why Khan doesn't want to roll the dice against Brook. Because it's a case of you win, fantastic. You lose, oh my God. But you lose to Crawford, not a problem. It, honestly, it's not a problem. You lose to Crawford, it's not a problem. Your, your name's still there. You've still got the name value. If it's a good fight, you still can roll the dice against Danny Garcia in a rematch. You've got other options. You lose to Brook, someone that you've been calling out or someone that's been calling out you for the last seven years, someone that you've been saying is an easy fight for the last seven years, it's big problems, right? Um, people have talked about the financials of it. If I'm honest with you guys, I'm not sure that Khan makes more money fighting Crawford than he does Brook. I, I'm not. Um, call me crazy, but... I think Calm Brook does Wembley. I, I really do think it does Wembley. On the UK side, I think it does good pay-per-view numbers. I'm not sure Crawford's a draw in America. So everyone's talking about, yeah, he makes more money fighting Crawford. You're going to have to show me the economics of this because I'm not convinced. Um, Crawford is a bit of a big draw. I mean, but he's most recent, I think, what was his last pay-per-view against Victor Postal? Done 50,000 pay-per-view buys. Yeah, Khan's done good numbers, but Khan's always had a good dance partner. Canelo, good dance partner. What was that, 500,000? Um, is Khan a big draw in America when it comes to pay-per-view numbers? I'm not sure. Khan Brook in the UK, surely that's 800,000 pay-per-view buys. No? Both of them kind of appeal to the casual market, more Khan, granted. But if you look at someone like Belly versus Hay, I know it's different heavyweights. Heavyweights seem to attract more attention. I think the first one done like seven, 800,000 pay-per-view buys. Khan Brook can do that. Plus the ticket sales, plus everything else that goes with it. The reason Khan doesn't want to fight Brook it's because it's too risky. It's just that simple. You lose to Brook, it's done. You lose to Crawford, you can come again. You lose to Crawford, you lost to the number two pound for pound in the world. What's the problem? And that's what's going on. Um, but I can't lie to you. I can't think of a fighter that's been calling that another fighter for so long and hasn't had the fight. I really can't. People maybe think about Khan Mayweather, but I only was interested in that right towards the end, right? When the only options were Maidana and Khan. Calm Brook, again, from a British standpoint, so this is probably a bit selfish, we've been interested in that fight for about seven years and it just hasn't happened and it's just not going to happen. And the only person you can blame, and think about it, Khan fans, because you're going to come at me, you're going to thumb down the video, the only person you can blame for making this fight not happen is Amir Khan. You can only blame Amir Khan. And surely it has to come down to... I don't know, surely we as the public have some say in this. Surely it has to come down to what the public want. If there was a poll online and it said, what do you want to see, Khan Brook or Khan Crawford? I think it would be like 80-20 for Khan Brook. Surely give the fans what they want. But obviously it's not going to happen. It's a shame. If I'm Kel Brook, you've, you've got to move on now. You've got to stop calling his name out. Um, you mentioned that you're going to come back down to 147. There are fantastic fights for you at 147. Fantastic. You've got to start making these fights happen. If it means you've got to go to the US and abandon fighting in Sheffield, then do it. You can't keep chasing someone that doesn't want to fight you.